Hey everyone, so in a prior video, I used Excel to create some charts to run some descriptive statistics for the first assignment in phase one for our research project. Now in this video, I'm going to continue to use Excel and now we're interested in estimating single population parameters and we're going to be running some confidence interval estimates for a mean and a proportion. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here I have the same Sydney, Australia data set on the listings sheet and I still have one of my pivot tables that I used for my charts. One of the charts we created was a bar chart by neighborhood with the average weekly price. But I was only interested in Airbnbs that actually had a weekly price. For my boat rental business, I was thinking that as people are gonna travel a long way to Sydney, Australia, that they would most likely be interested in staying longer than a few days and they might wanna stay. So a weekly rental seemed appropriate for me. So I filtered out any listings that didn't have a weekly price by unchecking the blank price in that column. Now, I'm gonna be showing you how to use pivot tables to get the data that I'm interested in. So for the confidence interval estimates, I am gonna be using the descriptive statistics data analysis tool pack because that gives me some of the um, statistics that I need for the confidence interval estimates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down on the neighborhood of Waverly. So in that prior video, I was focusing in on Waverly for my business. So I wanna do some additional analysis of this area. So I'm gonna double click on the 1346 and that will give me a new sheet with only the data for Waverly and they have a weekly price. Now you could use um, just traditional filters on the sheet and select the values that you wanted and then copy and paste those into a new sheet. It is important when you're running your descriptive statistics that you only have the data that you want to run the statistics on on the sheet. So no hidden rows or no filters and then run it on the sheet with the filters. Excel will consider all of the hidden data or the filter data in the descriptive statistics and then you're confidence interval estimates will be off. In the second assignment, I gave you the data for each question, so you don't need to worry about that for this assignment. However, when you're working on the Airbnb location that you have chosen for your business, you will need to consider these things. So I'm gonna run my descriptive statistics on this sheet. So I'm gonna go to the data ribbon, I'm gonna click on data analysis, and then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find descriptive statistics, I'm gonna click OK. Now for this particular tool, it is okay for you to select the whole column, column O. Now we do wanna check the labels in first row option here because row one has weekly price. If you don't do that, you will get an error because it's non-numeric and Excel can't calculate descriptive statistics on non-numeric data. Normally I just keep it as new worksheet by but I'm gonna go ahead and say output range here. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I have prepared a sheet to do these calculations on, so I wanna put it right on that sheet. So I'm gonna to go to the CI estimate mean sheet. I'm gonna click on A1. Just make sure that you have enough room for the output, otherwise you will get an error when Excel tries to put the output there and there's uh, something else already in the cells. The other two options that you need to check is summary statistics, and then I also want to get the confidence level for a mean at a 95% confidence level. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK and then we get our output exactly where I told it to put it. You could put it on a new sheet and then you can copy and paste it wherever you want, but I just thought I would demonstrate how that option is used. So I have prepped a couple of things here for this video. So we're gonna be inputting some things here and here is the one formula that is applicable. So our confidence interval estimate is gonna be the sample mean plus or minus our T value times our standard error. So our population standard deviation is not known for this Airbnb data, the larger area of Waverly. This is just a sample of the Airbnb data that we have. So we know since the population standard deviation is not known, we will be working with T values. I'm gonna look at the output that Excel gives us and I'm gonna identify three key outputs that we need. So the first one is the sample size. So that is actually labeled count. So we can see the count is 578. I'm gonna go ahead and put an N right here. So that is our sample size of 578. Now, the next piece I wanna identify is our sample mean or X bar. So I'm just gonna type in X bar right here next to the mean. 
And then we also want to identify our sample standard deviation or S. So I'm just going to put um, these uh, this information right here so I know which number I'm dealing with when I'm putting in my uh, formulas. So for my problem, I'm interested in a 95% confidence level. So I'm going to type in 0.95 here and then our alpha is going to be 1 minus 0.95. Our degrees of freedom is our sample size minus 1. So I'm going to do equals and then I'm going to click on the sample size and I'm just going to say minus 1. To calculate our T value, I'm going to use the T.INV.2T. So I'm interested in a two-tailed confidence interval. So I'm going to do open parentheses. The probability is going to be alpha and then the degrees of freedom is there. So we're going to click close parentheses and click enter. That gives us a T value of 1.96. So you might be thinking to yourself, that looks familiar. Well, that would be the Z value as well for 95% confidence level. And that is because our sample size of 578 is quite large. Now, next, we have our T value here. So you notice how Excel actually gives us the standard error. So it, the standard error is here. If you wanted to validate that it's correct, we could just say the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. And you could see that those numbers match. So that's a quick little validation that Excel is doing it correctly. And so our margin of error is just going to be our T value times the standard error. So we'll do equals T value times standard error. So this is our margin of error for our confidence interval estimate. So now all we need to do is do the sample mean minus our margin of error. So I'll do sample mean minus margin of error. And now our upper limit will be the sample mean plus the margin of error. So this is our confidence interval estimate for the weekly price in Waverly is between $1,233 and $1,459. So now you might be thinking to yourself, wow, so I noticed that the confidence level of 95% when I checked that box on the descriptive statistics came out to be 113.3184467. Well, what do you know? That is the same number as the margin of error. So if you wanted to get to your confidence interval estimate faster, two things. Number one, this confirms that Excel is using the T value instead of the Z value for the confidence level. These two numbers match. And so you could just use the output from the descriptive statistics to calculate your lower limit and upper limit. Now, the third option, if you really wanted to do it and not run the descriptive statistics, if you had the inputs required, we could also use the confidence.t function. You will need your alpha, you will need your sample standard deviation, and you will need your sample size. And if I do close parentheses, we could see that that also matches the margin of error. So I have shown you in this video three different ways to calculate the margin of error, and then we'll use that to calculate our confidence interval estimate. All right, let's now work on a confidence interval estimate for a proportion. So on this sheet, I have one of the charts that I created in the descriptive statistics video. So I was interested in seeing what types of property types are in Waverly that have a weekly price. Uh, selected Waverly, I filtered out any property that doesn't have a weekly price showing these four categories. However, you notice that one of them was kind of a custom category called other because I didn't want to have in my chart like villa and other and loft and hotel when they only have a few properties. So I grouped those all together into other. So for this video, I want to do a confidence interval estimate for the sample proportion of property types in Waverly for apartments, condos, and townhouses. So that is going to be the 429 plus 17. Often in the homework problems, the attribute of interest is given to you, and sometimes you need to calculate it by identifying the attribute of interest, and that is notated by X here. So here's our formula for the sample proportion. Um, before we calculate our sample proportion, let's go ahead and input the information that we know from our problem. So we're looking for a 95% confidence level. Our alpha is gonna be one minus 0.95. 
Our sample size is 578. Our X is going to be the number of apartments plus the condo townhouses. So that gives us an X of 446. In the Homer problem, you are identified which attribute of interest we are interested in. And so you'll need to add up all of the listings that meet that interest to calculate your sample proportion. So we're gonna calculate our P bar as X divided by our sample size. So we know for proportions, the Z value is always applicable for the standard normal distribution. So you can refer to the commonly used table and get the 1.96 for a 95% confidence level. But if you wanted to calculate it in Excel, you could do norm.s.inv, and then we're gonna do our alpha, but we need to divide by two because we are doing a two-tail confidence interval estimate. So we gotta put our alpha on both sides of the tail. So that's why the divide by two is done. Now you'll notice that when I do that, I get a negative 1.96. And that is because the 0.05 is on the left tail. And we know that on the left side of the distribution, we're gonna get a negative Z value. So you could either do the absolute value to get the 1.96, because we always need to use positive Z values, or you could actually just pass in one minus 0.05 to get a positive 1.96. So next, we wanna calculate the estimate for the standard error, which is gonna be this part of the uh, formula here. So let's do that now. So we have our P bar, or sample proportion, times one minus P bar. So I'm gonna kinda do this in parts, just to make sure we get it done correctly. So that is the numerator, and then I'm gonna put parentheses around that, and then I'm gonna divide by the sample size, and then I'm gonna take the square root of that whole thing. So when you're working in Excel and you're doing these formulas, you can either do them separately in different cells and then bring them all together, or I like to make, to make sure that I'm doing it correctly, I actually kind of break it down into parts. So that is gonna be the estimate of our standard error or uh, this part of the formula. So then our margin of error is gonna be the Z times the estimate for the standard error. And that gives us a 0 0.03422 margin of error. So similar with the population mean estimate, where for our proportions, it's gonna be our P bar minus our margin of error. And then for our upper limit, it's gonna be our P bar plus the margin of error. And so, our 95% confidence level for Waverly apartments and condos and townhomes with the sample proportion of 0.77163. We get a confidence interval estimate of 0.73742.0858. Well, there you go. I have now worked through some confidence interval estimates in Excel for a population mean as well as a population proportion. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any other questions.